up? It's Joe Rady from Rady's Rise. We're back here in my backyard doing a little filming. And what do we have for you today? This is a 2022 Hyundai Santa Fe. This one being a hybrid, it's the limited trim. And on top of all this, it has all wheel drive. But before we get into this midsize two row, yes, you heard correctly, two row SUV, let's talk about what's going on here. Hyundai. They have been doing the SUV business since Y2K, the year 2000. I remember that year very clearly because I remember everybody in 1999, they were freaking out that their watches weren't going to work, the ATMs weren't going to work, computers weren't going to work because of the reset from 99 to double zero for the year 2000. Well, everything is A-OK. -okay. We're still here and we're still going on throttle. And guess what? So is the Santa Fe, because the Santa Fe was Hyundai's first ever SUV that they sold here in the United States. Now, they've expanded that lineup. They got small ones, they got big ones, they got ones in between. But the Santa Fe, Santa Fe has really stuck true to its nameplate, being that two row SUV, now being able to be optioned a lot of different ways. So when the Tucson isn't big enough, the Palisade is too big, this Santa Fe slots right into that sweet spot. Now there is a bunch of competition in the midsize segment of the SUVs in the car industry, but most of them are three row. And that third row, a lot of times is very tight. So what I wanna do is I wanna compare this to two of those three row midsize SUVs that are hybrids. We're gonna go with the Kia Sorento hybrid and also the mighty Toyota Highlander hybrid. So let's go ahead, let's dive in our Santa Fe and find out, is it the better hybrid SUV you should be buying? Let's find out. Right off the bat, the color. It's called shimmering silver. I don't know what it is about silver, but it looks really good on a lot of different cars, including this Santa Fe. Now, just like the Palisade, just like the Venue, just like the Tucson, just like all their SUVs, we got that split headlight setup. So you're gonna have your daytime running lamp and turn signal up top, then it waterfalls down. There's your, your daytime running lamp. And then you got two, not one, but two projector beam style LED headlights. We do have a functional corner air curtain. And I like the way it's not gloss black, it's just flat black. Everything else has this nice aluminum style finish to it. Obviously it's plastic, but it's got a nice aluminum style. I'm really digging how they bring up this corner into the low area. And then coming across the grill, guess what? It all matches. Aluminum functional grill up top with your forward facing camera. That's a nice touch on this limited trim. And then working your way down, a little bit more aluminum trim and then flat black. And then I even like the way they sculpted this lower portion. Now, if you're comparing this to the Highlander, the Highlander has a little bit more traditional styling. I think in between would be the Sorento, but what I am digging is the way everything has a nice uniform look to it. And to be honest with you, I don't know about you, but the split level setup with the headlight housings has kind of grown on me, especially on the Hyundai products. Now, when we get up onto the hood, what do we got? You got a nice little rise, and then it sort of veers off towards the A-pillar. That's all you got. Nothing else complicated with the shape. Now, when we come around the bend, what are we working with? Wheel and tire setup. So on the hybrid limited, remember limited is the top trim. We have these 19 inch wheels, machine aluminum with the gunmetal metallic gray in the center, 235 on the width of the tire, 55 series sidewall. We do have regen braking. And this is remember front wheel drive base, but we got the H track. Not eight track, that's something different. We don't have that. We got H track, that's gonna be Hyundai's all wheel drive. You do have some flat black, and I am gonna zonk that. They should have, on the limited trim, made this shimmering silver, just like the rest of the body. But other than that, I think it's a clean, cohesive design. And when you're looking at the other models, the Sorento or the Highlander, very similar setup. You could actually get 20 inch wheels on your Highlander, where here, 19 is where you're at. Now coming down the side, what do we got? Color match mirror caps, just a little bit of gloss black. We got 360 degree cameras. Turn singles built in, of course. 
shiny metalwork top and bottom, aluminum style along that lower sill area with a little sprinkling of flat black. And then you're gonna have your raised roof rails. I'm surprised they're raised as high as they are. I thought they would be a little bit closer to the roof line just for aerodynamic reasons, let alone anything else. And they even on the limited trim do aluminum on top of the door handle with the body color. So that's a nice little extra touch. Working our way towards the rear, you do get a nice quarter window, even though there is no third row, but it is a good size. You'll notice how they do the trim. And then swinging around the back, what do we got going on? Low roof spoiler, you do have a wiper. You know me, I'm gonna zonk that. That should be tucked underneath. But you know what, the Highlander and the Sorento both have exposed wipers. I do like the way they do the LED lighting on the Hyundai Santa Fe. The one thing I don't like, just like on the Sorento, I don't like the way they put the turn signals down here. They're hard to see. Yes, I know if you stay 50 feet behind one of these, you'll be able to see it, but it's still too low. Santa Fe badge, just like it was since Y2K with the little sun. It's got the little sun shining in Santa Fe, New Mexico. That's where the designer was born, by the way. That's why they call it the Santa Fe. No, not really. That's, that's just me being silly. But H-Track developed on the World Rally circuits across the world. Hybrid, why? Because we have a lithium-ion battery pack and we have an electric motor. And then working our way down, just clean. That's all I need. I could even do without this horizontal line stuff, but at least I didn't make it look like an exhaust or a fake exhaust. And then you have the aluminum. Whoa, I almost fell there. I'm getting a little sunstroke out here. A little bit of aluminum trim on the bottom. But other than that, that's the Santa Fe. Let's go ahead, let's pop the hood and see what's powering. All right, guys, we got the hood popped. You do have hydraulic hood struts. Underneath the hood, you're gonna see the combo deal. This is why they call it a hybrid, because it's a blending of an electric motor and an internal combustion engine. But what do we have exactly underneath that engine cover that actually says hybrid on it? We have that one 0.6 liter inline four turbocharged engine paired with an electric motor. It's going to produce 226 horsepower, 195 pound feet of torque. Well, guess what? We don't have no stinking CVT like you have on a Highlander. We have a six speed traditional torque converter automatic transmission with the H track. Here's the fun part of it MPGs, 33 in the city. 30 on the highway, the vehicle can tow up to 2,000 pounds, and you're looking at the vehicle weighing 4,226 pounds. So really nice to see manufacturers taking advantage of this hybrid setup with the electric motor, with the internal combustion engine, and getting some pretty respectable MPGs. Obviously, the Highlander pulls a little bit more when it comes to MPGs, but why don't we go ahead Let's see what this Santa Fe looks like in motion. All right, guys, we're inside this 2022 Santa Fe hybrid limited trim with all wheel drive. It's a mouthful, but you know what? I think you're gonna realize you get a mouthful of stuff in here. Now I know you're saying to yourself, Joe, I priced, I priced the Toyota Highlander out with the hybrid technology. It's like mid to high 40s. How much is this Santa Fe? It's gotta be just as expensive, right? Well, guess what? This particular one, the way it's optioned, limited trim, all wheel drive, hybrid technology, MSRP of $41,000. Let's see what you get for the money. To the door panels, not too bad. Soft touch material up top. The glossy material, I wish they could do like aluminum or something. So it's not my favorite, but it's also not the worst. And it will hide fingerprints, which is good. You do get some nice white contrast stitching. It is soft touch and there's no gloss black around the switch gear. And then check out that funky speaker grill cover. I love the way they did the textured pattern. It's a Harman Kardon sound system, so you're gonna get some clear tunes. Door pocket, pretty good size. You could actually get a bottle 
of Dr. Pepper and two slices of New York style thin crust pizza in there. You might have to fold it, but that's okay. That's how you're supposed to eat it. And if you eat New York style pizza with a fork, I want your name, number, and address because I'm gonna pay you a visit. Anyways, going from the door panel to the dash, same thing. You got the soft touch material. I like the stitching. There's some of that glossy material. It would have been nice if it was aluminum. I don't know if I said that already, but it would be nice if that was aluminum, this stuff. That's what I'm talking about. You do have a nice baker's dozen slot for Twinkies. You could put up to 13 Twinkies in this opening. If you can't, then they'll give you the opening for free. So that's good news. And then guess what? Infotainment. Yes, it's that floating iPad style, but it's unique because look at how this sort of water falls down and then you have your 10.25 inch infotainment system screen, navigation, Apple CarPlay, Android Auto. Go figure, you touch it, it is a touch screen. So that's good news. I'll throw it in reverse. There's our backup cameras, actually very good resolution. Nice and clear, 360 trajectory. I could get the different angles, which is really nice. That's pretty cool, watch this. There's actually, if you look from the, air, the top view here, there's actually a gnome that lives underneath that grate in the middle of the road, just so you know. So if you're ever here, tell them I said hi. Go right back in the park. We're there again, working our way down. The AC vents, nicely shaped. Aluminum start stop button. See how the aluminum trim is nice? They should have used that more. And then you're gonna get a plethora of buttons, a cornucopia. AC, dual climate. I like the way there's physical nut, uh, buttons and knobs. I almost said nuttons, which that doesn't make sense because there's no such thing as a nutton. You do have a nice rotary knob for your different modes. You just spin it, and I'll show you what that does on the driver's side. Plus, you can lock the center diff, hill descent control, forward-facing camera, ventilated seats, heated seats. Nice. Push-button transmission for the six-speed automatic, heated steering wheel. And then looky down below, we got a 12-volt, and you got a USB-A, and a place for about seven Washington Red Delicious apples. Make sure you get them when they're in season or they're all soft and mushy. Or you could put a purse, a purse, a bag, a sack, a satchel, even a Ziploc bag. I do like the way they have that, that uh, nice finish. It would have been nicer if it was aluminum. I don't know if I said that already, but it does hide your fingerprints. Open it up, whoop, USB-A, and you got a cup holder. We got another cup holder, and this is where you put your phone for wireless charging. Close it up, how about key fob? You do have remote start. You do have smart park assist. Spin it around, there's the Hyundai badge. I don't know what this little wrapper's doing in there. Steven, I told you to get rid of your trash. Soft on the armrest, boop, open it up. What do we got? This is where you could put all your micro machines. Easily fit, I would say, 37 of them. Yes, 37 micro machines. And then you probably be able to get, I would say, eight My Little Ponies. No, I didn't have a My Little Pony, but I did have three younger sisters and they had plenty of My Little Ponies. But you could put about eight of those in there. Folded down, seats, I'm digging it. The nice leather material, look at the nice diamond stitch padding, bolstering, piping, electric assist for the passenger, of course, electric assist for the driver, and then watch this. First of all, I have to shrink down to help Steven out. Let me, uh, let me sit real low in my seat here just to help Steven. And then uh, we got a panoramic sunroof. Nice one touch operation. But I'm trying to get real low in the seat for Steven here to help him out because I know sometimes he has difficulties with that camera. But why don't you go over the business end? I'll sit up, I promise, and I'll show you behind the wheel of this new Santa Fe. Hi guys, business time. Great news is you got two memory seat settings. You got a nice aluminum Santa Fe sill plate there. Wish it lit up though, that would have been a nice touch. You do have your seat controls, lower lumbar. Ooh, look, look at how I could swing out the bottom portion here underneath my calves, and then I could fold it back. That's a nice little touch, especially for those longer drives. I'm six feet tall, even with the panoramic sunroof. I'll sh I can't go any lower, Steven, sorry. Um, even with the panoramic sunroof, I still got plenty of room in here, so that's good. Steering wheel. I wish on the limited they would do something with this horn button. I'm uninspired. I almost want to stop the video and just like go home. That's what the steering wheel horn button looks like. Some stitching, something. But they did a great job with the aluminum style trim, the leather, 
the contrast stitching. I like the flat black on all the buttons. You do have paddles to go through the six-speed automatic, and it is a manual tilting and telescoping steering wheel. And then check it out. You got 12.3 inches of digital dash, and then look at this. Go through your different modes. It's like freaking playing the last Starfighter video game. It is unbelievable. The graphics, the colors, the fonts. Look how fast it goes. Where's it going to stop? Oh, sport, thank God, because that's the only way I like to drive. We do have those blind spot cameras, clear as Christmas morning. And then you got information in the center that you could scroll through as well. That's what I'm talking about, Hyundai. Definitely more information, more technology than the Highlander. I think we could all agree to that. But why don't we go ahead, let's get into the back seat, because remember, there is no mid-row, and see how your passengers are going to like the freedom to just exist. All right, guys, back seat time, and this is where the Santa Fe wins. Slam dunk, grand slam. Thank you, ma'am. I mean, you just got more room back here because you're not dealing with another row. Now, what's nice is sliding seats. They recline as well, which is great. We don't have to worry about squishing anybody. Now, the backs of the seats, you do have the plastic, but I like the way they went with the solid pockets. So you could clean your kids' boogers off of this when they're picking their nose. And then in these pockets, you could easily put, I would say, two of the smaller pound puppies. What's nice about the pound puppies, you don't have to feed them. You don't have to take them out to the bathroom. Those are what's nice about those. Now, you do get a little bit of a command center going on here. Rear AC vents, USB A's, and a home power source. So you could charge your Game Boy in the back seat. Close that up. I got my own pocket for my Teddy Ruxpin because sometimes it was nicer to talk to Teddy than it was my own brothers and sisters growing up. You do have the manual, almost hit myself in the face, manual sunshades. Keep out the peepers, the creepers, and all the other freaks out there. Armrest. Not Charmin soft, but at least you got a nice piece of real estate to put your arm two cup holders and I do like the way they did the stitching even on the back seat but I am gonna have to fix this this is messing up my OCD there much nicer I like it when the headrests are close to the seat but anyways let's get to the cargo area and see how this compares to your grandmother's Highlander All right, guys cargo time very important time when it comes to an SUV hit that button nice electric assist fairly quickly what are you greeted to you're greeted to the biggest opening compared to a Highlander or a Sorento because guess what? We don't have a third row. And when you don't have a third row, you don't need cup holders, you don't need USBs, you don't even need seat belts. You just have space. On the driver's side, you do have the subwoofer for that Harman Kardon sound system. Remember, it's 12 speakers of 630 watts of power. Space is 36.4 cubic feet with the seats up. Fold the seats down it maximizes out at 72.1 cubic feet of space. The nice thing is you have some storage areas. First of all, you got storage areas underneath. Think about it. Ruffles, lays, Pringles, just fill them all up. And then this area, you actually could put some different dipping sauces. Maybe some, uh, you know, olive, some olive, some onion and chives, maybe some uh, salsa. You could put that back there. Just so you know, you don't get a spare. So there is no spare tire for this Santa Fe. Also, you do have a little nook for a small box of Twinkies. That's a pack of four could fit in there. We do have a 12 volt. Don't stick your Twinkie in there, kids. It will hurt. And then you can put the seats down just by a, the push of a button. But watch this. Hocus Pocus, high five Alakazam. Top, the back goes down, lock and loaded. We got the top facing forward, and we're gonna go on throttle in this Santa Fe. Let's go do it. All right, guys, we're in this 2022 Hyundai Santa Fe hybrid limited with all wheel drive. I got it out on the highway, and what you're gonna love is just how smooth this vehicle drives down the road. And the great news is, with it being very comfortable on the interior, you'll be able to go that further distance and feel fresh as a daisy. Getting to all the buttons and switches in the center console is very, very easy. And once you figure it out, don't be afraid of this. It's not very complicated. You got your dual climate control, 
putting on the ventilated seats. Right now we're in sport mode. Gauges are red, we got our power gauge. And then the other thing that really is worth its weight in gold is gonna be those corner cameras. So when you go to change lanes, it allows you to see very easily who's in your blind spot or what is in your blind spot. But we got the regen braking, brakes feel good. And what's also nice is depending on what mode you're in, it affects things like the steering, how the transmission behaves, all that good stuff. I'm gonna to come to a complete stop and we're gonna go on throttle. Here we go, on throttle. Nice shifts from the six speed automatic, no CVT. And I think you're really gonna be pleasantly happy with the amount of technology in here. I mean, having the full digital screen, your Highlander doesn't have that. Having that easy to reach infotainment system. Of course, you got blind spot monitoring, lane keep assist, all those safety features to keep you and your family safe. And then you have the higher level touches of the limited trim, the nicer seats, the nicer interior pieces, and of course the Harman Kardon sound system. But I wanna kind of showcase just how this drives both on the highway and off the highway, because I know that's what a lot of different driving situations you're gonna do with you and your passengers, whether you're in a Santa Fe or a Highlander. But really nice overall steering feel. I'll go ahead and put it into eco mode. That's gonna get us definitely more range than if we're in sport. But as you can see, just really, really smooth. Lots of different storage places. The only thing that's missing is like a head up display, but I don't really think that's a deal breaker. Let me know what you feel or how you feel about that in the comment section. You got the paddles that you could use to shift. It has a little gear indicator up top on the left-hand side, we're in third gear. Step on the brakes a little slow down, that's gonna drop us down to second gear. And then first gear. Come to a stop, we're gonna go on throttle again. Are you ready? On throttle, here we go. Shifting with the paddles. But, you know, it, it's actually a vehicle that brings a lot for the money. When you compare this to the Highlander, you're definitely getting more for the right, money. guys, it's been another fantastic, I wish I had a fan, that's how hot it is out here. Fantastic kind of day here with this Santa Fe. I definitely wanna thank everybody at Hyundai USA for allowing us access to this press fleet vehicle. Let me know what you think. Has Hyundai done enough to keep the Santa Fe relevant do we even need the Santa Fe? We got a pretty darn good Tucson. Everybody loves the Palisade. So do we really need the Santa Fe? Let me know in that comment section, or are you gonna go buy a Highlander and go the Toyota route? Let me know in that comment section. But if you're new to the channel and you're on your way out, hit the subscribe button. I promise you it's worthwhile. Come back for more. If you are a subscriber, thank you for being part of the Radies Rides family. We gotta give it up to Stephen Flood. Stephen Flood Photography. He loves his uh, Civic Type R, I know that, and uh, I don't think he wants to buy a Santa Fe. But show him some love in that comment section. Thank you, Stephen, for all that you do. And just like always, guys, I'll see you on the next ride.